Okay, so you remember when we looked at Maxwell's equations, we saw that mysterious little upside down triangle thing. You're probably wondering what on earth does that mean? And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Okay, so the del operator is equal to this in Cartesian coordinates. Now, by itself, it's kind of meaningless. Here we've got like partial of what? with respect to x, x hat plus partial y, y hat, and there's, I mean, what are you taking the derivative of? There, by itself, it's meaningless. That's why we call it an operator. So once you apply it to a certain vector, then you'll take a partial derivative of, of something. So you can think of the, the del operator as just like hungry for a vector to operate on and do something on you can basically um, uh, directly apply it or like multiply it um, and uh, multiply the, the del operator on a scalar field, or you can take the dot or the cross product with a vector. There's a lot of different ways you can use it and it describes a lot of really cool stuff. Get the bug. Real quick, let me give you a little example of how this actually works here. So let's suppose you have like a, a scalar function here, function of space x, y, and z, and we want to take del t here. Basically, you just take your, your t value and you would distribute it across this operator here. So basically distribute it, and so then you just take all these partial derivatives here, and if you work that out and add them all together, you should get this. Now let's look at what this uh, would look like if we're doing like a vector instead of a scalar here. So let's say we've got this, this vector here and we want to take del dot e. Well, basically you would dot, you would treat them, treat this like a, like a vector basically and dot it with this vector here. So you'd have basically, this ends up being three here. And the reason is because you, you, you multiply out their, I say multiply out their components, basically. You, you do partial or partial of x of five y, right? And that's plus partial over partial y of two x. Um, and then, So you basically, you know, it's, it's like you're doing like a dot product with unit vectors. And so then you can see here that this is zero, this is zero, this is three. So that's how we got that number. All right, with the del operator, you can do a lot of really cool stuff. So depending on whether you, you know, apply it with a, a gradient, um, or I'm sorry, a scalar function, or you dot it or you take the cross product. These are all called different things because they tell you very interesting things about the field in question. So this here is called the gradient vector. And I'll explain uh, how this works in this video. And in following videos, I'll explain what uh, del dot E or some vector is, it's called divergence, and what del cross E is. Um, again, all of these super useful, interesting concepts, and it's important to understand intuitively what this actually means and what it says. All right, let's talk about the gradient of a scalar field. And to explain what that represents, basically, I'm gonna give you kind of a funny example here. So uh, let's suppose there's a mountain here, and I have a basically a scalar function, the height h, as a function of x and y. And let's say Professor Strachan decides to climb up this mountain. And let's just say I'm feeling particularly adventurous and I want to take the path 
that is the steepest at all times and the most challenging. Well, if I have that function with me, and I've got my calculator on hand, I guess, um, I could uh, go ahead and calculate the gradient of this function here, and it would spit out a vector. And the question is, what would that vector tell me? Well, the gradient vector would actually tell me what the steepest path is at the point I'm at and how fast the height changes as I move in that direction. So in other words, the gradient vector is, it tells you what is the direction of maximum increase and its magnitude, the magnitude of that vector um, is the magnitude of the rate of change of height with respect to distance as you move in that direction. So this vector here would give me, it, it would tell me where to go and, um, and then just how fast I would be, uh, I would be increasing in height as I moved uh, a certain distance in that direction. And I'd want to keep on recalculating del h to keep on updating so I could have an update on what direction I have to go at all times in order to make it the, the ascent as challenging as possible. All right, let's do another funny example just to make sure that it's clear. So uh, something a little bit about me. Uh, so whenever I am in an airliner, I actually like the turbulence. It's just kind of fun for me. So let's suppose that I decide to get my own personal plane and I think to myself, you know what, I want to fly into the areas that have the most turbulence. And let's just say somehow I have a function here that tells me the turbulence at a point in space is a function of x, y, and z. So the question is, I need to figure out where do I need to go? Well, if I, if I, if I want to basically go to the places that have the most turbulence. Well, as I'm flying, I go ahead and just calculate the gradient vector here of this, and it would give me a certain vector. And the direction of that vector would tell me the direction that I need to steer my plane in order to increase, in order to get the maximum increase, go in the direction of maximum increase in turbulence. And uh, the magnitude of that vector, that gradient vector, would tell me how quickly does the turbulence increase as I move in that direction? So if I like moved a meter or just a short distance, the turbulence would increase by just a little bit. Um, and uh, it would tell me the rate of change of that, that turbulence. All right, so we could summarize all that we've been saying with more formal language and say that the, the gradient of a scalar is a vector that has a magnitude equal to the maximum rate of change of the scalar per unit distance and pointing in the direction of maximum increase. So that per unit distance is uh, in the direction, unit distance in the direction of, of maximum increase. So that's the the gradient, and in the next video we'll get into divergence and curl.